Well, in the last video, we had a lot of fun making very simple little lockdown bobbies. And if you remember, this was in children's plasticine, just like that, bought from Amazon. But what I now want to show you, or begin to show you, is how to give yourself more scope. And that really is by making armatures, the strength and the sketch within the sculpture. What is an armature? An armature is essentially the skeleton. Um, it just gives you so much more freedom. But let's not forget that simplicity is equally magical. So let's go have a look at armatures. Let me take you for a quick walk around the studio just to demonstrate some armatures that have given me freedom. So these are a group of warthogs. They could be locked down bobbies. And if you can see, these are just standing literally on one leg. These little babies, one little touch. Um, and this is the magic of making an armchair. It gives you the freedom of movement and excitement. And here we've got a buffalo head. You can see it's big, it's bulky, um, and it's all made in, in plasticine. But there's a strength in it. There's wire um, armature going through the horns, around its head, along its back. And this enables me to hold all that plasticine off the ground. Here is a giraffe I'm making. You can see the, the, the sketch in it. You can see it's good and strong. Um, this is what I mean by a strong, good, strong armature, strength and sketch. And I'm going to show you how to make a basic armature today. So here is that very simple, but fantastically good fun lockdown bobby made out of blast scene. Here is a very similar one, but there's a subtle difference. Inside is an armature. You can, it gives me space to have in the, between the legs. It gives it much more uplift and freedom. Susie made this, my daughter Susie. She made it around an armature a wee bit like that. This is slightly more sophisticated than we're going to deal with today. I want to show you how to make very simple armatures using found materials that you might well have around the house. Wire. This is a gardening wire. Lovely, flexible, turn, um, sort of twists and bends where you want it to twist. And another wire, um, different sort of standards of wire. You've even used coat hangers. Slightly more tricky. What other materials ought we to, if you have got a handy tape, that's useful. A pair of pliers, if you've got them, ideal. But otherwise, with this sort of wire, you can just bend it with your fingers. If I take this one, this is a coat hanger, which I've just very um, quickly bent around into a shape. I'm going to tape this bit together so that it holds it in place. And here I've actually got really a pretty neat armature, strength and sketch. Um, this is the head of the Cairn Terrier. Lockdown Bobby, um, and the rest of this wire is just going to give it a bit of stability. So I'm now going to show you these simple armatures. This is a small Cairn Terrier Lockdown Bobby armature um, made out of green gardening wire. Very simple, just three bits of wire. It can be, it can stand perfectly well on its own, just like that, and you can model up around it. Or for more stability, you could drill it into a bit of wood um, and that's going to work a treat. So how do we go about making that? Let me show you. Um, I have got here two bits of wire. Um, I've got my pliers, um, but I'm just going to show you how, uh, using my fingers, I can bend it, um, bend it into shape. Although it is better in a way, if you have got the pliers, to use a pair of pliers because you just get a bit more of a sort of sharper shape. However, look, that is fine. So that would be the that would be the hind foot up through its leg, along its back, down its shoulders to the front foot. And let's just snip that off there for the time being. And a dog has got four legs. So we need to make a second one. Just like the last one. 
This is doing all by eye. I'm going to show you tomorrow or the next time over. I'm going to show you how to do a slightly more sophisticated version of this um, using measurements. But it's all quite simple. So there's nothing to be spooked by. It's all very easy. But let me remind you, armatures give you freedom. Freedom to create more exciting works. So those are four legs. Now what I've got to do, I've got to go from the nose through to the tail. So let's find another bit of wire. Yeah, I think we'll use this and I'll just show you that using a pair of pliers can be a good thing. That will come through to there and then probably up its tail to somewhere around there, snip. And essentially that is our very basic armature. Let's tape it together. Now you can use sellotape. This parcel tape is ideal. Um, gaffer tape works perfectly well. I generally would advise that you tape the legs and those spines together first, like that. Good and tight. Make sure the tape is tight. Don't put too much tape on, but tighten it around. Now, if I now put the whoops, head and neck, spine and tail on, and then tighten it up good and tight, I have got what is essentially a little dog armature. And that is going to work just a treat. So let's have a quick look at this um, very simple armature. Um, I've got three bits of wire going from the toe up through the shoulder along its back, down, down its hind leg, and from its nose to its tail. Now, basically, these, this wire is like the skeleton of the dog. So that will be up its, its front leg, up into its shoulder here, along its spine. Then this will be the, where the hips are, down to its, its hind legs, its sort of knee, um, and then down its back leg. Just imagine your dog standing up there and the shapes it has in its bones. So now that is a very two-dimensional dog. Not quite right. So I'm now going to bend it so it's got more three dimensions. I splay the shoulders out a bit and just bend it so that, so that it's a three-dimensional dog. It's very simple to do, but you see there, it's, oh, whoops, his head's gone wobbly. You see there, it is three-dimensional. So let's model up this little armature. Um, you can use any materials you like. Um, the old plasticine as we made here, or I'm going to use this plaster lin, um, comes from Southwest Industrial Plasters. It's very like um, the new plast, um, plasticine, but just slightly softer. What I'm going to do, how I'm going to go about the modeling is build up around the wire armature, around the, the skeleton. Um, and I tend to start with fairly good, big, chunky bits, um, forming the shape of the body. So I'm building up a bit of a sausage around his body. Um, I'll then go put a little bit up the neck. I'm just working bit by bit, not finishing any one bit completely first, but just working all around, turning it around. So if I do one side, I'll tend to do the other side. One hip there, one hip there. I'll go down its shoulders. So one shoulder there, and you see that shoulder. And if I do one shoulder there, I'll do a shoulder this side. Now, um, because it is, as you can see, it's a, it's kind of can be a little wobbly, you can solve that problem. Um, I might, for example, get a bit of wood like that. And then um, I can just make a bit of a base so that you it effectively sticks on space and becomes stronger. But now, just notice how I'm keeping to the sketch in that armature. Strength and sketch, keep repeating it. Um, but I'm following the bones. Um, 
So down its legs, I will add a little bit of plast uh, plastilin so that it goes down the legs to its little elbows. And I'll go down the hind leg now. But keeping to the armature, because remember the armature is its skeleton. The legs are really quite thin on a dog, even a hairy dog. Um, the, ultimately, the leg is quite thin. Now, I think it's worth noting that the only tools I'm using at the moment are my fingers. Um, okay, I use the pliers to bend the wire a little bit, but essentially the, the fingers are the are your most important tools. What I do is try and build it up as a whole. So it's growing, it's growing as a whole um, around the wire armature. Um, so I don't finish one area first and then move on to the next. The technique with the head is to put a little bit along its nose, then a bit on its cheeks. Small bits are going on. So long as jowls. This is where, as you get to this stage, you might want to find a tool or two. You can get tools very easily from art suppliers or even from Amazon or Southwest Industrial Plasters. So, yeah, what we've been, what I've been doing is just developing it and building it up, building it up, building it up. You can sort of kind of plant it on and just drag it down to form the feeling of the hairy, hairy um, can terrier or sky terrier or whatever sort of dog your lockdown Bobby happens to be. Right, let's have a little look at doing his, its face. Now, what have I got? Yep, the feeling of the jowls and so on, it's all there. Um, I'm going to make some sockets for the eyes, which will go in about there. Pencil is a very good tool for this game. So at this stage, we're using, whereas we were using big chunky bits of plasticine, we're now just using small bits. And now your fingers are your main tools. However, just using even an ice cream um, stick makes a very good tool or a pencil. Now you can get these little wooden tools or plastic equivalents of them from um, Southwest Industrial Plasters or off Amazon, and they are quite useful, particularly these ones with a little serrated or, um, yeah, toothed fronts, because they give a quite a good little sort of hairy dog type effect. It may not be perfect, but it gives you an idea as to how to go about it. Now, next time, I'm going to show you how to make a more sophisticated armature so that we can get even more life and even more bounce um, into your sculpture. But remember, easy is good. Basic armature gives you freedom. The next one is going to really allow you to let your dogs run wild.